for inviting me today. So this is a completely different topic for most of you, I'm sure. Uh, many of you probably um, don't deal directly with musculoskeletal medicine. I'm an exercise, a sports and exercise medicine physician. I work in central London and I see a lot of amateur athletes and elite athletes. And one of my interests is in tendons. And I'm going to talk today about the use of shear wave elastography in improving our ability to manage um, these difficult, <coughs> complex pathophysiological -physio problems. So a normal tendon uh, looks like this. You've got tightly packed collagen fibers with very little in the way of blood flow and also extracellular matrix. But when you see a patient or an athlete with tendinopathy, you tend to get this. You, you get haphazard uh, collagen disarray. You get absent, uh, areas of absent cells and proliferic cells. You get an infiltration of blood vessels, and with those blood vessels come nerves that we, we think cause pain. And you also have abnormal extracellular matrix uh, in the tendon. So it's a distinct histopathological problem that often causes a change in the mechanical properties of the tendon. So tendinopathy from a, a practitioner that works in the cold face and sees um, patients with this disease is a very complex pathophysiological process. So injury rates vary, but certainly in elite sport, we're looking at about 10% of, of athletes will develop uh, a lower limb tendinopathy, either Achilles or patellar tendinopathy. And we know that in our practice, it often makes a very good athlete into a very average athlete. So this is a very difficult problem. It might only be a tendon issue. It's not a, a malignancy, or it's certainly not uh, something that is life-threatening, but it certainly can affect the ability of an athlete to perform. And we also know that the treatment really is exercise therapy. So it's actually loading the tendon, loading the muscle, loading the athlete. But we also know that the rehab is very slow. It's often uh, very frustrating for the athlete. There are certainly non-responders to rehab. And our other interventions, either injections or shockwave or certainly surgery, has less than 50% success. So as a practitioner, I'm thinking, how can I improve uh, these patients that present with a difficult tendinopathy. And this is where shear wave elastography may help us uh, define this, and certainly imaging may help define this. The problems with uh, uh, conventional imaging is that they lack objective, they're fantastic for uh, excluding or confirming tendon disease, but certainly there are a lot of limitations, and they include a lack of objectivity, a lack of reliability, and a lack of reproducibility. So really, we can't be using uh, conventional imaging, that is MRI and ultrasound, to guide rehabilitation or monitor treatment. So we've got this complex relationship between structure, mechanical properties, function and pain, and shear wave elastography is able to actually measure the mechanical properties of the tendon and perhaps might be able to improve our outcomes. So traditionally, the way we've actually used or measured tendon stiffness is a, a, a term called ultrasound dynam dynamometry which measures the tendon elastic properties by looking at a change in tendon length during maximal isometric contraction. But we know with this technique there are a lot of limitations. It's very complex. There's a lot of uh, transducer fixation techniques and data analysis. There's time commitment. It's dependent on muscle uh, contraction, which is affected by pain. And the other issue is that it measures the properties throughout the entire tendon. And we know that in tendinopathy you get regional changes or regional pathological changes. So elastography, one of the benefits is that we can actually measure these regional areas. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, I tend to use it for tendons, but other practitioners tend to use it for, for muscles and also for nerves. I'm not gonna mention too much about this because we've heard it before, but there's two different types, strain elastography and shear elastography. And as per the other speakers, the preference in MSK medicine is really to use a shear wave elastography because of not only its qualitative ability, but also its quantitative ability to measure the elastic modulus of the tendon or the intrinsic value. There's been some fantastic work by Amy Fu in uh, the Hong Kong Polytechnic University that has really validated the use of shear wave elastography in tendons. They did a, a good study finding high correlation in measurement of the elastic modulus between the shear wave elastography and mat material testing systems. They also found a very high test, retest reliability of shear wave elastography. 
and this is unpublished data, but certainly on personal communication, they've also found a high correlation in the measurement of elastic modulus between shear wave elastography and also the ultrasound dynamometry, which is really the gold standard in measuring tendon stiffness, uh, particularly in research. But we know with any technique, uh, we know with any, any imaging modality, technique is important. So they did another study looking at uh, these variables. And they found that you need to use the lightest touch possible touch, shorter acquisition time, and to eliminate inotropy, which is an artifact that is related to, uh, particularly related to musculoskeletal medicine. But also you need to be aware of the slack position. So this is the angle at which the muscle stiffness contributes to the, to the tendon stiffness. So this is the, the angle here. And based on previous studies, the Achilles slack uh, angle is 15 degrees. So you want to be greater than 15 degrees. And luckily, that's in a neutral position. Uh, and the patella needs to be less than 40 degrees. So this angle here is approximately 40 degrees. So you want to be aiming for 40 or less. If you measure the uh, tendon stiffness at greater than 40 degrees, then the muscle stiffness will contribute to the tendon sti stiffness and give you uh, a, an incorrect result. So this is the way I do uh, um, uh, shear wave elastography. Uh, the, it's very, very important the patient is rested at least for five or 10 minutes. They don't do activity that on the day of the procedure. Uh, you then acquire the B mode and then the uh, shear wave uh, elastography and then you measure the uh, elastography by using a cue box, as we, as we know. Uh, and this is just an example of me acquiring the image on a very pathological patella tendon. So certainly it's very important to hold the probe very still. Uh, the patient has to, has to remain still. And you acquire the picture uh, and then do your measurements. So this is very interesting from a clinician's point of view. It may not be particularly interesting for a radiologist, but there has been co direct correlation between mechanical properties of these tendons and pain. So in musculoskeletal medicine, it's very interesting. There's a term called a structure disconnect where we're arguing that actually, in fact, structure doesn't necessarily correlate with pain. And one good example is in chronic low back pain, where a lot of patients who have back pain have very little way of uh, imaging modalities, imaging abnormalities. And the same can be said for tendon pathology. But in fact, if we look at some of the studies coming out with shear wave elastography, we're finding a distinct correlation or direct correlation, which is very exciting for a clinician. And again, the Hong Kong Polytechnic Clinic really leading the way in, uh, in research in this area has found significant moderate, moderate correlation between elastic modulus and self-perceived pain uh, and also this visa P, which is a, uh, a pain and also a function score. And you can see here there's good uh, correlation between the two. And in another seminal paper by Aubrey in 2015, he found that painful Achilles tendons had decreased stiffness, but also found that the shear wave elastography may lack the specificity, or, or sorry, lack the sensitivity in diagnosing uh, tendon disease. But again, it might actually be able to correlate with pain quite well. So a recent meta-analysis by Coombs, this is unpublished, but was presented at a tendon conference in 2016. She really confirmed these uh, findings. So patella tendon shows an increased stiffness. Achilles tendon shows a decreased stiffness. And the reasons for those differentials are really unclear. Why does an Achilles tendon or disease tendon reduce in stiffness while patella tendons increase in stiffness. We have no idea and uh, really we, we need a lot more research in this area. There's been some recent clinical applications of shear wave elastography in tendons. This is really exciting, is looking at rehab post Achilles rupture. So when patients rupture their Achilles tendon and they, and they undergo repair, uh, the, the rehabilitation can be quite complex. And so uh, a group, again, the Hong Kong Polytechnic Clinic, have found that perhaps we can use shear wave elastography to improve our ability to rehab these patients. They found direct correlation between increasing stiffness and improving foot function scores. And anecdotally, in our work, we found that those patients that have significant patella tendinopathy have a signal void. Now, we don't exactly know why that is, but it seems to correlate with what we call this point in no return where patients don't respond to treatments very well. Uh, Aubrey suggested that perhaps a, 
these signal voids in the tendons were related to partial tears, but we're not so sure. So this might be a way of subgrouping patients into those patients that can be treated with conservative treatment versus those patients that need other treatments. So really, these are the potential uses of shear wave elastography in sports medicine. I see it as research to find out, well, how does a tendon change to what we do? Does it change for the better or not? As a diagnostic utility with conventional imaging to confirm what we're thinking, and also, more importantly, as a clinician to monitor rehabilitation and try and improve it and optimise it, and so it certainly optimise post-surgical cases. And then perhaps also screening. So perhaps if we screen a rugby team, for example, at the beginning of the season and do a shear wave on them uh, of their tendons, can we predict symptoms moving forward? These are all very exciting uh, hypotheses, certainly from a screening perspective. But this is really only the tip of the iceberg with regard to our understanding of tendon disease. Elastography objectifies mechanical properties We've also got other novel imaging modalities, something called UTC, which is down here, which objectifies structure. And my colleagues in Brussels are now doing something called speckle tracking, which objectifies movement. So perhaps we might be able to make an average athlete a very good athlete with all of these imaging techniques. So in summary, tendinopathy is a really common condition in musculoskeletal medicine. Tendon stiffness may correlate with pain. Shear wave elastography measures regional stiffness changes in tendons and might be useful in the clinical context. But we need more clinical research, really, to support the clinical application. And the potential uses I see are research, diagnosis, uh, monitor rehab, and potentially screening. Thank you. Any question from the floor for the speaker? Yeah, there is one. If the patient, yes. The the. So 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 the more the pain, so the, there is a correlation between pain and stiffness in the sense that. The more pain there is, the less stiff is the tendon. That's in the Achilles, and it's reversed in the patella tendon. But uh, let's say it's pathological tendon. Yes. No, no, no. We actually don't find that in, in the studies. We find that with the Achilles tendon, the actual stiffness is less so pathological with pathological tendons. Stiffness is less. For patella tendons, the stiffness is more. We don't know exactly know why there is, a, there is that differential. We're probably, we're probably dealing with two completely different pathological processes. They're similar pathological processes, but they're different tendons. They work differently. So, so uh, we're, we're thinking that, that that might be the reason why they change differently. The, when you when you do the measurement, you you do it in a resting position. When you when you're doing the measurement, so you, you you're looking at trying to find the tendon stiffness. You you're trying to reduce the the influence of the muscle stiffness on that value. When you're doing the measurement. We we have two other questions. Sorry to interrupt here. I think there is one here. Yes. So, so the histopathological process involves an increase in blood flow, and so the answer to that is yes, you often see an, an increase in, in blood flow in the patella and the Achilles tendon. If your question is, is there a difference in the amount of neovascularization, it's very difficult to quantify that on, on colour Doppler, uh, certainly on, on the machines that we tend to use. So there, there might be an increased blood flow in patella tendinopathy, but it's very hard to quantify. And these are one of the limitations of using conventional imaging for, for monitoring or for defining structure is that it's subjective and we can't really define it. So we're trying to use these other imaging modalities to be, be more objective, objective or objectify the changes. 
Do we have one last question yeah. on, on there? My question is probably uh, very much going into the same direction. Could you have a controversial uh, stiffness in Achilles and mm. calatentus? Mm -hmm. um, do you feel there might be an influence of an overlap measurement of stiffness measurement or vascularization? We have that in other organs like kidney transplant. Have you cross-correlated um, stiffness and uh, quantitation of very hard to quantify blood flow on colour Doppler. It's almost impossible. And I have this argument so many times with radiologists and other practitioners who say blood flow doesn't correlate with pain. This is one of the examples. And my argument is it's subjective. You can't quantify it. Now, there are other ways I know that you could quantify blood flow, but you can't do it with colour Doppler. So the answer to that, that is, as far as I know, I don't have the answer to that. But it'd be a great study to look at. And maybe, maybe the blood, increased blood flow uh, is, the, is the factor uh, in, in, this, in this change in stiffness. And also, uh, this is something that I don't know the answer to, is why is there a signal void in the more pathological tendons? Uh, I can't answer that question, and nor can most of the other people that I ask that question to. So maybe you guys can help me. <laughs>